Is this the best AMD Mini PC of 2024? Written Alloy 9 is great about cooling and performance, but how about the rest? Let's inspect! Hey folks, welcome to the channel, great to meet you, I'm the Tech Mishka. And finally, I have the chance to put my hands on the Riatan Alloy 9, a mini PC which, well, from initial impressions, I can say it's fairly heavy, which definitely is a good thing about mini computers. And of course, I finally get the chance to put it through my thorough inspection, including a lot of tests and benchmarks, real life examples, and this time I would be able to share with you you know, some cherry pick comments from the community about the longevity and actual use for prolonged period of time. And that's gotta be fun. Let's get into it. The rather boring yet sometimes colorful artificial benchmarks are on par with the expectations. The 3D Mark's popular titles show that this is indeed among the most capable mini PCs ever made. And the good news is that besides the high achievements about frames per second and stable operation, the computer wouldn't overheat, has very effective heat dissipation, and the fan remains really quiet even in the tough moments. Running Cinebench, another excellent piece of software to determine rendering performance, we have another evidence in favor of the good performance of Riordan's top end model. As you may notice, it ranks really high in the chart and leaves a lot of other famous models behind. The real life tests and usage confirm the results thus far. Gaming is indeed quite pleasing for a computer that comes with iGPU. I mean, playing CS2 at such a high frame rate in 1080p is quite a nice surprise if you see the famous Radeon 780M in action for the first time. If you are into PC hardware, however, you definitely are aware of the progress that AMD have in this area, and this particular APU by AMD just blows all the latest Intel models out of the water. Apparently, if you prefer to keep things budget-friendly, then an AMD APU with 680M or 780M are currently the best deals you can get and will allow you to experience performance similar to a desktop PC equipped with a GTX card by NVIDIA. All of it inside this ridiculously small case. I had to, of course, check how it handles the tasks that I usually perform on my editing station, Turns out that, despite the lack of a dedicated GPU, the encoding task in 4K has completed in very tolerable amount of time. The only true bottleneck, both confirmed by the tests and the video encoding tasks, seems to be the storage. As you're gonna notice, in the end of the export operation, it's the drive which is busy at 100% and not the CPU or the GPU. I guess this would be the first component I would consider upgrading. The real-life use cases could be countless. Whatever goal you can assign to a desktop computer is likely possibly to be achieved by the Riatan Alloy 9. So yeah, graphic editing, designing, even 4K video post-production, they are all possible if you don't expect too much out of the computer. Perhaps 1080p timelines are the sweet spot over here. Web browsing, multimedia and similar are out of question, you don't need a Ryzen 9 to get smooth experience with these. Maybe deploying it as a router or a firewall won't be a great match either. But again, the hardware is way too good for that purpose anyway. If you prefer other operating systems, most Linux distributions are gonna be fine. But if some of the drivers don't work, you're gonna be pretty much on your own. Unboxing the Alloy 9 is some good experience, nothing too fancy, but definitely better than what most low-end Chinese brands would offer. Speaking of which, think of it as a clone or a recasing of the Minis Forum's UM790 Pro. I think similarities are undeniable, and maybe the housing of the Riatan Edition is somewhat better because of the material used. So yeah, awesome feeling about the build quality. The rubber pads at the bottom are removable so that you have access to the screws keeping the bottom cover to the chassis. There are a bunch of connectivity ports on the front and on the back. And overall, about the design and the build quality, I'd say it's close to 5-star experience. Close to, because I wish they offer some more color options. The specs? 
in my opinion, might be even better. We mentioned the famous Ryzen 9 APU, bringing in 8 cores of the Zen 4 architecture, graphics which is Radeon 780M with up to 2800MHz speed, support for multiple monitors, there are 32GB DDR5 memory, 1TB NVMe, Wi-Fi 6E alongside the other connectivity protocols, there are USB ports including USB 4, there's a dual cooling system and pre-installed Windows 11 Pro. Without a doubt, we talk about really fantastic set of specifications because we have one of the best AMD Ryzen 9 CPUs inside. We have loads of RAM, a lot of other really exciting components. Just a reminder that we talk about laptop grade components so that you get the best kind of efficiency, the least power consumption, and of course, in order to be able to fit that much into this tiny space. Now, when it comes to mini computers, and that's something similar to the situation with laptops, the engineering of the chassis and the internal layout have really great significance because they would be the key about efficient cooling and efficient utilization of all the power that these components inside actually can provide. And I think the Riatan Alloy is among the champions here because just based on the name Alloy, you can imagine this housing acts as a gigantic chassis. And I'm trying to say that the next two minutes are particularly important in this review because we want to make a teardown, see about the internal layout and figure out what kind of upgrades and repairs are actually possible. Unlike some other models, Alloy 9 provides generously easy access to the inside. Remove these pads, unscrew, carefully lift the cover up because it has the wireless antenna soldered onto it and game on! Just notice the plate holding the second fan. The chassis has excellent construction among the best layouts you would find with mini PCs to date. If you want to add a second drive, has to be M2 and you have to unscrew the next four screws and gently lift the assembly up. There's a cooling pad available for both of the NVMEs and here is my first disappointment, because Riatan could have used a lot better grade of storage. I've seen some earlier batches equipped with Lexer units. The RAM is by Corsair, assembled in Mexico, and the bottom plate has also a heat dissipation add-on. Better don't touch any of the four remaining screws, they keep the CPU heatsink in place and we don't want to touch it unless there's a specific reason to do so. But with some more efforts, you can eject the whole thing out of the chassis and here I'm perfectly happy with what I see. You have full access to each and every component inside the Alloy 9, making it one of the repair-friendliest devices ever seen. Connectivity-wise, spot on. The Wi-Fi module, besides being replaceable, is also supporting CAT6e, meaning that it has performance close to a dedicated gigabit LAN adapter with a cable. Given the good antenna, signal reception is super strong all the time, there also is a current version of Bluetooth protocol supported. The available ports are also rather enough, Riotan advertised multi-display setup, however, they forget to mention that the PC supports 4K at up to 144Hz refresh rate, at least this is as much as my monitor can achieve, and it's very welcome news for gamers. The other thing which somehow fails to make its way to the news, on the front there are two USB 4.0 ports and I managed to get my Razer eGPU case working with the one on the right, which allowed me to get even greater results about gaming and stuff. Note that I showcase an example with RTX 2060, which by all means is quite an old graphics card, my backup one. So, you could go for something fresher in case necessary. Don't forget that despite the USB 4 standard, attaching an eGPU is somewhat limiting the maximum performance of the card. Speaking of which, when the Alloy 9 is stretched to the maximum, this is the sound of the fan. If the CPU is loaded at less than 30% in a room with normal temperature, you won't be able to notice at all the existence of the mini PC. And another helpful test here, showcasing the power consumption, first in idle mode and then while it is performing a CPU intensive task. Before we briefly cover the software, here's a quick BIOS walkthrough. Some interesting areas indeed. There's not too much to say about the operating system. Actually, there is. During the first time setup, do not 
connect to a Wi-Fi network all the LAN, especially in case you want to set it up with a local account, and trust me, you prefer to do it this way. Other than that, licensed Windows 11 Pro, all the drivers work fine, there is no bloatware, no spyware or whatsoever, clean as a whistle, so you can load it on top with hundreds of apps and it will still be fine. In case you want to find out more about the Windows 11 best practices and secrets, pretty sure that YouTube is going to be generous enough if you use the search option. Here we can focus instead on something else, the shortcomings. I feel that the major one is the storage unit. Such a high-end processor deserves significantly faster NVMe. I'd certainly go for a Gen 4 base drive and there are plenty of good options available and I'm gonna make sure to link a good recommendation in the video description area for you. Putting this aside, the lack of color options, the lack of VESA mount and the single LAN port are perhaps the only areas where Riotan could consider improving for the next generation. All this leads me to the question, <laughs> is this a unicorn? Because for mini PCs, I really avoid combining them with the label gaming, but that's actually good for a lot of games if you have the right kind of expectations, because in no way as good as a proper desktop system with a dedicated GPU, but what AMD did with this processor, including the 780M, which is as good as some of the 1000 GTX line by Nvidia from a few years ago, that's, that's remarkable performance. And at this price point, I feel there's nothing better than the Riatan Alloy 9. It's, it's just a marvelous system. Actually, something I plan to keep as a backup system because apparently even for video editing, it does a pretty good job considering the fantastic processor inside. So that's my opinion about it. And based on all the comments I've seen on Reddit and other forums, how to find anything to criticize, therefore that's a very easy to recommend mini computer running Windows 11 Pro. What do you think? Do you agree or not? Do you have a better pick at this price point? Let's carry on the conversation in the comment section below the video. As usual, thank you very much for watching this video till the end. If you enjoyed, please give me a like, subscribe for more cool tech inspections and I, Michael, gonna see you in the next video. Bye!